Churches can be in two different situations. One can be that there is not much revelation in their lives. So they need to learn how to hear. And have to learn how to recognize and identify. And um, the other situation is people who have a lot. They have to learn how to handle it. Well, because one situation is that maybe there is a little potential. So the potential has to increase. 
But there can be another situation where there is a lot of potential. <coughs> but my wife and I, we have discovered that it takes more than potential. We've seen good people. Very good people. With a tremendous potential. But in the course of time, he didn't become anything, really. Heaven is secure. I'm not saying they are kicked out of heaven. <laughs> heaven is secure because it deals on what he did for us. Okay, so it's very important. And it, in a church like this, there is a lot of potential, a lot of revelation already. And that's the primary issue. If it's not there, there is not much to do. I mean, there is much to do, and it's about bringing revelation. There is potential, a lot of revelation in our hearts, in the house. And it's a tremendous responsibility to look after that. Yeah. Yeah. I've been a guitar teacher, believe it or not. I tried everything. I think the only thing I need to try is to do bookkeeping. That's really not my planet. So I taught guitar for a while. And people with no talents. We can still teach them something. They can play a little rock and roll here and there. Little Michael Jackson, little... Lady Gaga, little Madonna. But when you find people who are talented, oh. and the potential is big, and then if they do nothing about it, even the untalented will do better than them. Because they did more with less. The others did less with more. And I have the impression that God is more pleased about the first one. Because they had a little, but they grew, they grew it well. Others had a lot, but they stayed on a very low level. Amen? So in churches like ours, we have so much, we carry so much. Which means we have to pay very well attention to what we have. That's why I'm speaking about, that's why I believe Peter is writing about issues like this. The revelation goes from verse 3 to verse 12. In his first letter, first chapter. After that, all the rest is about how to protect that and grow it. Determination. Definition. Today we speak about diligence. With no revelation, all that is, is not bringing anything. It will be like makeup on a corpse. Yeah. 
But we need bodies which are alive. Dead. The corpse, you know? The corpse. 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 The dead person. Dead body. Ah, no one is not so good. You get no one to touch the dead. No one is a sorry. You won't need. I'm sure something will take more than what's touched the old tuning. It's a little bit for me. Or what about the two kids? Who's missing that? Still a corpse. The most important thing is missing life. So, life has to come back. Makeup will not do it. And nice shoes will not do it. Italian shoes will not do it. Life has to be there. Revelation is life. It's rivers of life. And it's very basic for us to know how to get it and lay hold of it. After that, we need determination. We need definition. We need diligence. We need devotion. I don't have time to go through all that. Okay? So that's why it's so important for us to handle what we have. Sometimes we say, oh God, I'm hungry for more, I'm hungry for more, I'm hungry for more. Oh, yeah. It's good. I'm hungry for more too. At the same time, I have to establish what I have. I have to consolidate it. I have to see that the plant is getting some roots deep inside my mind and my emotions and my whole life culture. Amen. That's why it's so important. That's why I won't speak a lot about Revelation in this seminar. Because you have a lot. I say you have a lot. Maybe you have more than you think. Maybe you don't, you don't realize how much you have. Some people say to me, I don't hear anything. Maybe you hear something, but you don't know how to identify it. Or you don't know how to keep it and cultivate it. Then it disappears. Because what you feed will grow. What you don't feed will decrease. And the wrong things will grow. Soul issues, selfishness will grow. Alright? So we are talking. Is it working? Fantastic. Funny colors, but it's okay. That's, that's cool. Red and violet. Ooh, that's cool. Modern colors. All right. So, you understand, Revelation is the main thing. It's like life in our body. So I mentioned a living hope, the unfading inheritance, irresistible joy, our tested faith, prophetic runners, imperishable seed. That's a huge package. If we if we are conscious of that and become more and more conscious of that. And if we dig a little deeper in that. God told me at the beginning of this year. Dig deeper. Dig deeper. Philip, we have to dig deeper. So we don't need, in a way, we don't need more. 
We might need to go deeper with what we have already. Uh-huh. So revelation. Then woo. <laughs> I love that. Determination. Otherwise revelation will disappear. If we don't link determination to what we have heard and seen and begin to understand. Then we become casual. Maybe next month, maybe next year. Right. That's what Peter said. This is go from verse 3 to 12, verse 13. Be prepared for action. Connect some readiness to what you have heard and seen. Be sober minded. Don't let one issue cover the whole thing. Don't be distracted by things. And set your trust fully to the revealed grace. Okay, the next one, definition. So we have to define. God will help us. The Holy Spirit will help us. Amen. After I left, the helper will come. He's not the controller, he's not a dominating person, he's a helper. God knows this word is not easy. Because we still have some old nature inside of us. But we put off the old man and we put on the new man. But it's good to have a helper from heaven. We need, help. We need earthly helpers as well. But the most important is the heavenly one. The helper will come and he will teach you. Don't think he's teaching more. He's defining things. So we understand what he has already said. So we can align to truth. Successive alignment. Ongoing alignment. That's why I said Peter is the right man to read to write these two letters. Because he had some alignments. Some were, some were soft. Some were quite brutal. Otherwise, it was, come on, Peter, I know. God can do both. So sometimes we are invited, other times we need a soft push. Amen? I know you prefer the soft push, but... From time to time we need a good push. There was a young man in our church. He grew up in the church. And, and uh, he moved to another city for, for university. Nice young man. Sweet, polite. Respectful, good listener, but he was a bit in the periphery of the church. But there was nothing wrong with him. He was like the perfect young man. The dream of every mother in law. Such a 
But I, I was wondering, is he alive or dead? <laughs> because corpses can smile too, I'm not. <laughs> but such a nice man. And I was thinking, should I let him just be or should I give him a soft push? You know, it's a difficult balance. You know that. The same with parents. The same with parents. Should I correct him or should I let him do that and find out by himself? Children play with the matches. Tell him or should I just let him burn himself and find out this is dangerous? <laughs> Any parents tonight? Yeah. So I, I was waiting. But last year. The thought came. I will give him a push. So I wrote to him. And I said to him, What about FGC in London? Question mark. Have a good day. PhD, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so, half an hour later, I had the answer. He said, God spoke to me. To go to Just a push. Yeah. It was a revolution. He just woke up. And woke up, really woke up. <laughs> still polite and respectful, and still blue eyes and blonde hair, <laughs> nice clothes. But alive, wake, waken up in the spirit. When he came home, I talked with, I met his father in the church. And I look at him and I smile to him and say, how is your son? He couldn't even speak. He was in tears. I cannot recognize Something just came alive. So sometimes we need a push. Not a, not a harsh one. But a push in the right direction. So Peter had a couple of that. So definition. In 1 Peter 2, verse 9, Peter said, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. Yeah, nine. First Peter 2, 9. You are a chosen race. Royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Verse 10. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. What is that? Definition. You are a people. You are a holy nation. You are a royal priesthood. So be determined. Be mature. You are not slaves anymore. You are not a people, but now you are God's people. And then verse 11, Beloved, I urge you. That's the push. If you understand you are a royal nation, a royal priesthood, if you, if you call that revelation that you are a holy nation, then you must act from that. 
beloved ones urge you because you are God's people because you are royal priesthood because you are a holy nation I urge you I challenge you I speak strong words to you not Pharaoh words but Father words be determined Let the Holy Spirit help you to define things in your life. Because you are royal priesthood, you are kings and queens in the kingdom. You are kings and priests for God. You are a holy nation. Oh, take that seriously, he said. I know you are dispersed. I know you miss one another. I know some of you have homesick to Jerusalem. I know there is a little group there and a bigger group there and few young people there. But you are still a holy nation. You are still a royal priesthood. You are God's people. His own possession. Possession. Okay? That's why I urge you not, not to become that. You are that, but you have to act from that position. Don't, don't speak like slaves. Don't relate, don't relate to God like slaves. You are sons and daughters. Define your position. Draw some lines. I was a slave, I'm not a slave anymore. I was rejected, I'm not rejected anymore. Rejected. Amen. I spoke yesterday about introverted, extroverted. We have a personality. I'm still introverted. My wife is still outroverted. <laughs> but we will not let that define us. In God there is no male, no female. But I'm still a man. She's a woman. It has not disappeared. But we don't let that define us. You with me? It doesn't mean that male and female disappears. We are all one gender. <laughs> men are men, women are women. Fathers are fathers, wives are wives. But it does not define us. Yeah. At the School of Reformation we had in Denmark in February. At the School of Reformation. We had in Denmark in February. We had some people from another church. And after the week, yeah, I spoke in my sessions. And then I had invited a couple from Birmingham, the pastors from Birmingham, to come and take the sessions in the weekend. Yeah, it was a couple, a man and a woman. But then I heard two weeks later that some of them had problems when she spoke. Because women should be silent in the church. And as he said, they should not speak from the front. Women should not speak from the front. Mm -hmm. 
This is middle age, my goodness. <laughs> what, about speak, what about speaking from the back? Then? Is that okay? <laughs> Man, you need your sadness. Yeah, Pastor Malin from Birmingham, the wife of Pastor Malin. She is a phenomenal speaker. Phenomenal. And I wonder why, because I went to the bathroom where she spoke. And I saw two of them sitting in the lobby. I was thinking, why did they do that? 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 This is 2019. There is something called a man, there is something called a woman. But in Christ, we are not defined by that. Amen. Amen. The same with introverted, outroverted. I'm okay. I am who I am. And what defines me is I am a son of God, period. Amen. And my daughters, I call them sons also. My daughters. Spiritual daughters. I call them sons because we are all sons. The same position. We are not defined by gender and the spirit. Okay? Are we there? Excellent. So let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. So we have revelation, determination, definition. Diligence. Let's talk about diligence tonight. Are you ready for that? Second Peter. You have a good word for that, diligence? Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 3. His divine power has granted us, granted to us, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. <laughs> Өөрийнхөө алдар ба давуу чанараараа чанараар бидний дуудсан түүний жинхэнэ мэдлэгээр дамжуулна түүний бурханлаг хүч бидэнд амь болоод сүсэглэл хамаатай бүхнийг соёрсон. Эдгээрээр дамжуулна бид тэр бидэнд үнэтэй бөгөөд гайхамшигтай амлалтуудаа соёрсон. Ингээд та нар энэ дэлхийд тачаалаар байх ярьцлаас ангилж ирснээр бурханлаг мөн чанарыг хуваад зэрчнэр болох юм аа. Again small piece of revelation. Because without revelation, nothing works. No. Without life, the body is a corpse. So in the same way he started the first letter with a piece of revelation, in the second letter, he starts with a small piece of revelation. This man is a man of God. He knows how things work. Because Jesus defined his life. So, we continue. For this very reason, so there is this piece of revelation, you understand? And because of that, it's not something you don't have, it's something you have. And, and because you have it, something has to be linked with it. 
In the same way, if we have this and this and not the other two, then we are going nowhere. Because we have revelation. The Holy Spirit defines things for us. But we show no determination. We make no decisions. We don't make any choices. As somebody said, if you don't take a choice, if you don't make a choice, you have made a choice. You don't make a choice. If you don't make a choice, People are lost not because they took a decision, it's because they didn't take a decision. 
to give the lives to him. Humus, too, then there's a hook, song of when I get gender, so we get sheets to my mouth. So even if we have revelation and we have definition, if we don't show some determination, even he gives us all his promises, all what pertains to life and godliness, but we don't make any effort. We are going home. What a partnership. <coughs> God, me, God, me. We are working together. Write a chorus in song about that. Go home, be, go home. Did I sing right? Yes. Almost. Almost. Okay. So, diligence is important. So here, I don't, know, I don't know how it is in Mongolian, mm -hmm. but verse 5, make every effort. In another translation, it says, be diligent. How is it in your Bible? It's like it. Be diligent? Really? Then is terrible. Then no, So you understand there is a progress. Okay. Uh -huh. So we will talk about what is diligence. Oops. What is it? it. Should be this way. Okay, let's talk about diligence. My point number one is diligence intensifies our progress. Okay, let me show you this, verse 5. For this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. Uh -huh. Do you have that? Mm -hmm. So diligence has to do with adding certain things. There is something given by God and you add to it. How can we add something to God? Because God designed it that way. We are partners. I know that's stretching thoughts. Stretching thought. How can we help God? <laughs> because He wants it. He wants to engage us. He will never overrule our will. So diligence intensifies our progress by adding to our capacity. Yeah. So be a word. You have faith, but add virtue. Okay? With faith, you add virtue to your faith. You have, you have faith, and you add virtue to your faith. That's what he says here. Supplement your faith with virtue. Okay, so we are adding. So Peter said, be diligent in that, add things. Are you with me? You add. 
As we do that, things will become very intense. Ингэж хийж чадхын болвол юмс айгуу тийм хүчтэй болно. Because it's stronger and stronger. Хүчтэйгээс улам илүү хүчтэй болно. More and more stable. Илүү тогтвортой болно. More and more determined. Илүү шийдэнгэ болно. More and more solid. Бүр илүү цул болно. More and more established in our faith. Итгэл дотроо бат суурилагдна. Are you with me? Yes. So faith is trust in him. So as you trust him, add virtue to your faith. What is virtue? I call it moral excellence. Moral excellence. Good values. Morality in the world is decreasing with high speed. And we have to have moral excellence. Integrity, honesty, sincerity. Amen. Yeah. Represent heaven. Heaven is clean. Heaven is transparent. There is no hiding, no shadows, no gray zones. So we walk with God, we trust God. But then have more excellence. Remove the gray zones. Okay. So faith, you have faith. Add moral excellence to faith. There was one thing, now you have two. You are a little stronger. It's not, oh, I believe in God, I believe in God, I believe in God. Yeah, but you can believe in God if you step into a gray zone. Oh, I trust God. And you flirt with another person who is not your wife or your husband. Then you are in danger. You can tell me that you are a child of God and you have prayed for people and they were healed if you cheat your wife. I don't care about your healings. I had once an elder from, from a Pentecostal church in my training. He was there in the room. His wife was there in the room. And there was another lady in the room. There were many people. There were more people in the room. And then one day, one of the younger ladies in the group came to me. No, she cried in the session. And I thought, okay, no problem. It's a human right to cry. When God works, sometimes. So I did nothing about it. Next session she cried again, next session she cried again, then I thought maybe I should talk to her. So I talked with her. On the break, she said, Pastor, my boyfriend just left me. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, you. It's okay. You know, it happens. And maybe it was the wrong one, so let me go. Amen. 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 <laughs>
But then she came later and said, there is more to the story. Uh -huh. My boyfriend is married. Uh, ah, okay. That's a different story. <laughs> so, still let him go, okay? <laughs> still the same advice, let him go. But make long story short, there was more to know, more insight. That boyfriend was an is an elder in the Pentecostal church. Uh -huh. Damn. Then there is more to the story. His wife is, is there in the room. So in the same room I had the husband, the wife, and the lover. The same Bible school. And the man is an elder in the Pentecostal church. Welcome to Christianity. Then I talked with him. I took him aside. I'm going to tell you all the details. What is it to me? You know, Pastor Philip, this is not wrong after the Bible. He said, okay, show me where. He didn't remember. That was honest at least. But then he said, you know what? I pray for people, they are healed. And I lay my hands on people, they fall under the spirit. And I thought, I'm okay. Who falls, who is healed, because it's not you, it's him. But, but you live in darkness. So I will tell your wife, and I will tell your pastor. I mean, if it's correct after the Bible, you should not be afraid. So I said, you can go home. I don't want you. But I want to receive from myself. You just keep the word and don't come back, Jack. <laughs> so, you know, faith. Yeah. You can have faith and live in darkness. Compromise, live in the gray zone. Yeah, you can be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, you watch a dirty movie when your wife is sleeping and the children are dreaming, sweet dreams. To faith add moral excellence. Oh, and he sharpens our lives. Yeah, I want that. I want, that I, want, I want to be that, that clean. I want to be that clear. That be fine. Yeah. Amen. You are saying it intensifies your life. If you are, if you trust God and walk with God and talk with God and pray and worship, but compromise, it removes intensity from your life. And it will take intensity to change the nation, I can tell you. Our lives need intensity. Yeah, All right. So Peter goes on. To faith and virtue. Then he said, to virtue and knowledge. Which means insight <coughs> in the things of the kingdom. So 
One thing is faith, then add virtue, then we have two things, then add knowledge, then we have three things. Do we need insight? Yes. We need insight. We need to dig deeper. Uh -huh. And it's a, bit, it's a challenge to dig deeper. Because we can ask, why go deeper? I know so much already. I'm not like that. I want to dig deeper. And maybe I was trained in science. I was trained in science. And maybe it's a blessing. And I think it's a blessing from God. Because it has formed, it has given me a searching mind. That was my first professional dream to become a scientist, a researcher. I love to dig deeper. Oh, 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 that's mm. Mm -hmm. Keeps me alive. Dig deeper. Find out. Whoa. Just saw something here. Whoa, that's good. Dig deeper. Be hungry for him. So Peter said, faith. Then you add virtue to your faith. Then you add knowledge to your virtue to your faith. What happens in your life? Intensity grows. Then he continues. He said, and self-control. So now faith, we add virtue, we add knowledge, we add self-control, and Peter says, be diligent in that, make some effort. Not to boast. Not to become arrogant and look down at people. But because you value what you have. If you have married a good wife, you value her, you will add to her. You will bless her. You will love her. If you value your children, you will add to their lives. So it's not, it's not, um, this is not ambitious, you understand what I'm saying? This is healthy, healthy thinking. If I have a good car and I value the car, I will wash it, I will look after it. If the tire goes a little bit down, I will put some air into it. I look after it because it has a value. I use money to buy it. I will wash it and clean it. Where we live, we have parking spots for everybody, for every family living in the block. So our neighbor, his car, his car is neighbor to our car because he's neighbor to us. <laughs> so sometimes I look into, when I take my car, I look into his car. It's like a garbage field. Pizza rest. Bottles, empty bottles, toilet rolls, all kinds of stuff in there. I wonder where he's sitting. 
It's in your gift box. Huh? That's what they want. I mean, if you value your car, you keep it. Okay. I'm not saying a car is squeaky clean every day. I'm not saying that. Our car is like our apartment from time to time. <laughs> but we do it because we value it. You understand? You value your house. You I have a bicycle. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like to run, I like to walk, I like to ride bicycle. I keep my bicycle fit. Otherwise, when I use it, it's like... Because the chain is full of worse things. If you value something, do you look after it? Alright. So to your knowledge, add self-control. Can we continue? Yes. Self-control is sobriety. Balance in your life. Self-control. Read this. Self-control. Self-control, sobriety. Okay. We have to stay sober. Don't freak out. As it's good to have somebody to talk to from Because then we can get rid of some wrong reactions. So I come home from whatever. Enter the kitchen. I said, my wife, I am fed up with this. I hate this. And she knows, okay. Relax. It's good to get out, to get it out of your system. Because then you have exercise self-control. If I carry that frustration, it will harm me. I will wake up in the middle of the night. And my first thought will be, I hate that. It's not, a, it's not a nice way to wake up in the middle of the night. You should not be able to get fed up with that. God, give me a break. <laughs> God, stop that. That's not a nice life. So, I give it to my wife. <laughs> she knows. Okay, let me come. And then it's out of me, then you're like, I relax. It's good to have some companions on the road. Who will not be harmed by that? Or, or think the worst scenario. Whoa, man, now he's close to suicide. No, I'm not going to suicide. I just have to say to somebody. And you love me, so you will, be, you, will, you, will, you will forgive me. Self control is important. Some of us, we have a high temper. Watch your temper. Because your temper is not only harming somebody, you are the one most harmed. Because the people around you receive it, you carry it. It's good to have a good kingdom companion. Deliver the package. It's like a Thank you.
because he's a technician. Mm -hmm. yeah, when the pressure is too high, beep, the, the whistle is whistling. Yes. Uh -huh. When you boil water, yes, yes, yes. Yes, you have a whistle. Yeah, it's too challenging. Get now, like, that's the thing. It's the top of the line. It's too much. Is it? Is it? So when I come home, the the kettle will not explode. Just okay. So I'm okay. Just whistling. It's called self control. We have to have that. Otherwise, you might harm somebody and you harm yourself. Okay. Next one. Mm -hmm. Add to faith, virtue, knowledge, self control. Add steadfastness. You see, verse 6. I follow Peter. It's not me. It's Peter. If you have a problem with that, talk with Peter, not me. Because he knew that things like that might harm or limit the potentials. So steadfast and be consistent. Let your pastors know they can count on you. I need people I can count on. The people who volunteer to drive me from the hotel to here, from here to the hotel. I have to count on them. It's not like 9 o'clock, they're still not here. What are you saying? They should be there. I have to count on that. So we need consistent people. So I, I'm, I'm a man of faith. Yeah, good for you. You're not consistent. So add steadfastness. Then Peter said, to steadfastness, I'll add godliness. All that is in, inside the make some effort package. Okay. Maybe some of you think, oh my goodness, I feel tired now. Heaven is your home. But if you want to change your environment, your professional sphere, that's the rule. Do you know what? You, we have a help of it. Not only a blesser, a helper. Transform into his likeness. This is going from glory to glory. <laughs> Amen. We thought glory to glory is something else. Glory to glory. We don't know what it is. But we, we rejoice anyway because glory to glory. Glorious. Glory to God. I'm going from glory to glory. This is it. <laughs> no, this is going from work to more work, to more work, to more work, to more work. <laughs> that brings intensity in our lives. Then he said, add brotherly affection to godliness. It's in verse 7. 
앙스로스에게 이늘릭 님. 그래서 that's why we don't read the l e t t e r s of Peter because it smells of work. Hard work. 마르크 피터 피트렌 작태기 갓도 알지. It's not hard work. 그게 다 어째 손쉽고 이제 마르크. God is in charge. The spirit is your head. The word is a lamp for your feet, so you can see where you walk. We just have to add a little effort to it. That's all. Yes, God. I, I was in a gray zone yesterday. I will not step into that zone again. That's it. That's it. Is that simple? What I said to him yesterday was not the whole truth about that issue. Father, I'm sorry. I will wash my mama. Be ama media. That's it. In case of that. That brings more excellence. In our city, no matter. Yesterday, I spoke words I shouldn't have spoken because I'm a tempered person and she irritated me. Help me with self control. I will. 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 I You have become an example. Worthy to follow. The last one. Love. Wonderful. I'm happy it's the last one. Because it was the first one, we stopped there. Now uh, love is the greatest thing. The love to add love. You understand that? He said to them, you have faith. He has given you promises. Everything, everything pertaining to godliness and to life and godliness, he gave you access to. In my first letter, I told you you have a living hope. You have an inheritance in heaven. You have a seed in your heart. Now you have to add something to it. And if you do that well, it will intensify your life. Then you don't have to talk a lot. Sometimes we talk, talk because what we say is not intense enough. So we blah 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 blah. And when Jesus talked, whoa. For sure, but the intensity was too boom. Lazarus, come out. That's it. Because he was all alone. When he came out, no long prayer. Let's sing Amazing Grace. No song, no prayer. Lazarus come out. Jumped out. Release him. And then party time at home. Yeah, normal life. Jesus was wrong. Jesus was wrong. 
So sometimes we do certain things because we lack intensity. So let's make some efforts. Especially because he goes before us. I think what the Bagi said yesterday, things will become more and more easy. The pastor Bagi told me Remember many years ago I preached a message here. From Ecclesiastes, I think. That if the axe is sharp, axe, axe is sharp, you don't have to put much strength into it. Because the sharpness will help you. Sharpness will do half of the work. You have to do the second <laughs> So when intensity increases in our lives, <laughs> we will do simple things. We still have to do something. We have to be prepared for action. <laughs> but simple things will have great results. Okay. Uh, maybe we should take a break now. Is that okay? The other days I had a long voice, it's not me. It's God talking to you. Okay. This was from verse 3 to verse 7. Diligence brings intensity in our lives. Now, verse 8. For if these qualities are yours. So Peter builds more on this. If you make this little effort, and these qualities begin to take shape, more will happen. Now don't panic with all these qualities. It's like, I was thinking in the break, it's like, I'm not a good, I'm, I don't know how to make food. You need more than eight, I could find out. So not much more than that. <laughs> and, uh, but I know that in order for our body to do well, we need different vitamins, C vitamins, D vitamins. You know, every time you make food, you don't panic. C and D. C and D. C and D. But at the same time, your body, your body needs it all. You cannot just eat rice, 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 rice. It's the same here. It's like vitamins. Diverse diets, your body will do well, feel well. If you eat McDonald's all the time and drink Coca-Cola all the time, your body will protest. Stop that! <laughs> In the spirit, we need vitamins, different vitamins, diversity of vitamins. 
тийм болохоор сүнс дотор бид нар төрөл бүрийн витаминууд хэрэгтэй юм. Ямар ч бүрийн төрөл шүү дээ. So don't panic. Бид нар энэний талаар л ярьсан. Тийм болохоор битгий гайхаар байна. I want is not panicking which makes you. Миний их нэр хоол ихтэй бүр ингээл гайхаж хоцордог юм. За цаны юу гэлээ юу гэлээ. Химчэл ингээл. That's chemistry. That's not making food. Тийм бол бүр хими урал хийгээд байгаа юм. Хоол хийгээд байгаа юм. Okay, so don't don't panic. That's normal life. In here, in here, just the sort of bit here, fresh. In just what he may enter. In math, you have addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. Yeah, math, math. There's no name. Has a good job. The power has to do with the fresh. It's not that. Oh, multiplication. Oh, multiplication. Just addition for me. Don't name him. Don't touch him. Just make one. Okay. Okay, so. Next one. Diligence gives ownership. Diligence gives ownership. Because Peter said, if these qualities are yours. Then what about Peter? He said, if they are chandrut and tenir, what symbol? They must become yours. In tenir, what must they be? Oh, but uh, Jesus owns everything. I uh, own nothing. You should. Jesus booked it. It's Mr. P. You should. It's Mr. P. You should. I mean, you should own something. If he gives gifts, the gift is yours. Okay. If I give you a gift, that gift is dead to me. It's yours. Cannot say. By the way, how is my gift going? Don't bother. It's not yours. It's mine. Am I right? Yes. Otherwise, it's not a gift. I think I gave you an illustration once. Use it again because then you people hear. Yeah. So she must have got to do something. First in South Africa told us once we were there many years ago. A rich man in the church decided to give a gift to the pastor. I'm coming to give for you. A truck came. It was a big gift. <laughs> and in the truck there was a grand piano. Huge, shiny black. Not one fingerprint. Pastor knows the fire truck. So we put it out of the truck. The machine is a garage. And the pastor went into his garage. The pastor in garage no watcher. And he took a huge hammer. Hammer from a tattoo box, isn't it? He was a showman. He was a good chef, I met him. Big guy. He was from this place. So he picked up a huge hammer. A tattoo box. And he walked to the grand piano. どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうしたの？どうした
the more we work with that and we eat all these spiritual vitamins these qualities are ours Peter said they are yours Peter in the Use them. Use self control. Use moral excellence. Use consistency. Use it. It's a gift. These qualities are yours. Alright. Okay, next one. Diligence makes things grow. Verse 8. In these qualities are yours and are increasing. So faith must increase. Virtue must increase. Consistency must increase. Oh, that's wonderful. If these qualities are yours and are increasing, so our small efforts produce great results. Because the Holy Spirit is helping us. Let's go on. Diligence brings results and more revelation about Christ. Still verse 8. We're just reading what Peter wrote. If these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective. Oh, they keep you from being ineffective. So when these these qualities are ours and they are increasing, results will come. We become effective. We are lazy, casual, don't care. But there are good results. And then it will keep you from being unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which means we will know Jesus better and better. That's fantastic. Because I believe the Father wants to tell us more about his son. Not only he died for us, resurrected for us, sent his Holy Spirit. But he's still fully active in heaven. Father wants to tell us so much more about him. Peter say, if you do these small efforts, all these qualities in your life, it will give you even more access to understanding Him. I'm amazed by diligence. I never thought diligence would have so many good effects in our lives. This is being diligent. Number five. Diligence consolidates your election and calling. Consolidates. Verse 10. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. 
They will be richly provided for you. An entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whoa. Yes, we cannot eat. It's difficult to take it. Ah, still struggle with that a little bit. It's not, it's not entrance into heaven. That's very easy. You die, you win. <laughs> but here he says, the, the gates of the kingdom will be widely open for you. Which means, how to speak to people in a way we can draw them into the kingdom. Peter spoke one and a half minutes, two and a half minutes. Thousands came in, just a few minutes. That's what I call entrance into the kingdom, have access to the kingdom. Jesus saw that. That's what he said. Shoshabil will prevail against them. Because that church will be packed with the kingdom. Totally saturated with the kingdom. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. For me, you cannot find bigger than that. You cannot find bigger. You can browse the Bible, quote and that. This is the biggest statement. Entrance into the kingdom will be richly provided. Even resurrecting the dead will happen in the Not all the dead, but some dead. Power will come. Strategies will come. Business ideas will come. Successful careers will come. And just that, actually, the career in this country. Oh, you richly provided for you. Entrance. That's why in verse 12 he says, Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. So it seems like Peter decided, okay, in the future, I will not talk, of, talk about anything else. For the next 15 years, this is my message. Because when this takes form in your life, Everything is possible. Heaven spreads on earth everywhere through our lives. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Though you know them, do we know them? Yes. We, uh, we know about faith. We know about moral excellence. We know about consistency, being steadfast. 
We know about all these qualities. You say, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I will still remind you. Because it's so powerful. You know them, you are establishing them, but I will still talk about that. Yes. Verse 15. Listen to this. And I will make every effort so that after my departure you, will, you may be able at any time to recall these things. Which means <laughs> Peter said this is so important. And even you know them, established in them, I will be talking about them. And when I'm gone, I will make sure somebody else will talk about them. Because it's so important. Thank you, Peter. That's why I write manuals. So after my departure, <laughs> you can still hear my voice coming out of the pages. Just relax. I have many years yet. Is diligence important? Oh. I saw that three months ago. And I was in shock. Can just that produce so much? Well, I will be there. Worship. In listening to messages. Be diligent in healing. Chapter 3, verse 14, and then we close. That's the last words of the last chapter, of the last letter of Peter. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent. The last, the last greeting. The Be diligent. serious. To be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Oh, I Oh, this will be my last greeting as well. You know, be diligent. Keep hearing his voice received from him. They all love it. On a daily basis, listen to the message again and again. Read the Bible. Read again. Don't just run fast, read again, again and again. Until it makes an impression on you. You know, we have to work with revelation. <laughs> Say that to somebody today. We have to work with revelation. Not just hear it. Then. We have to work with it. Meditate upon it. And then things emerge more and more comes. Revelation. Determination. Definition. Diligence. All that is so important. Let me finish and have a little more. So, 
Let me tell you why this is very important. Because it's important because it's there. In the book, it's God's word. Let me give you some personal thoughts as well. It's important because these three years are important years. 2018, which is gone, 2019, 2020. I've said that to many people. I've said that to you before. And I continue to say it until December 31st, 2020. So we have, we have to be awake and pay attention. That's the entrance to a new decade. And God wants to give us a fresh hope. Great things are going to happen. If we let him work and we make our part of it. Number two, we had the school of apostolic reformation in last August. So, in Terrench, out there, you remember? We had these few days, important days. When I spoke about a sense of responsibility, they take responsibility. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. We have to let them work in our lives. I told you the reason why God picked up Abraham because he found in him a sense of responsibility. God was pleased with him. Whoa, that man. I like him. Because he takes responsibility for his life, for his children, and children's children. Number three, some of your leaders came to Denmark recently. And it was not tourism. We showed them the North Sea, but that's not why they came. They tasted the Danish wind, the Danish sand. In their eyes, in their ears, in their nose, in their hair, sand everywhere. But that's not why they came. Deeper connection between Denmark and Mongolia. Then, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, your pastor will be ordained in Noah. Which will bring new levels, new dimensions. To your house. To your lives. Finally, seven young Mongolians will be in London for the training, intensive training. Four Mongolians from here and three from other places. That's important. It's not to watch the Tower Bridge or read the Queen. <laughs> Or pray for Brexit, whatever. It's for intensive training of the next generation. Important. It's not, it's not a coincidence. Pray for them when they go. Because God will raise more examples in the house. Young people can become an example. Paul wrote to Timothy. And he said, be an example for all believers. Not only for your people of the same age as you, for all believers. So young people can become an example for all believers. 
They can become an example for me. And it's not humiliating. It is not humiliating. I don't feel humiliated because a young person walks strong in God. I feel encouraged. And if I had a contribution into that, I would be happy. Final one. I gave you the two letters of Peter. And I don't believe it's a coincidence that God brings these two letters to us right now. I believe God knows. The diet, the diet we need. For every sport there is a different diet. God knows the assignments God knows the next decade. So he gives us food. Amen. Amen. So be encouraged, be bold. Be patient as well. It's patience and consistency. But there are, I give you just six signs that this is an important thing. Don't think, yeah, but we are a small church. Some are in Korea, some are in China, some are in America, some are in Switzerland. It's not a problem. It's not read the letters of Peter. It's not a problem. He said, access to the kingdom of God will be provided richly to you. I'm so sorry for you. He in Jerusalem. Whoa, great things are happening. But over there, no. exactly where you are, you can have access to the kingdom. So we might be dispersed, but we are determined. We might be dispersed, we are in Denmark and so on. But we are determined. Amen. God bless you. We see some of you in Malaysia. And the rest I will see you later. See you later. And God bless you and meditate on this, work with it. Thank you, that's what Paul said in Timothy. Think about it. 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 Think about it.